<laughs> this is Potaholics. My name's James Pikeway. Welcome to Tech Talk with myself and Andrew Thomas from DigitalNexa.com. And for the Hello. next 50 minutes, we're going to be talking technology. We got a great list of stuff. And what we're not going to get to is ACDC, but we'll do that next show. But we've got a whole bunch for you to dive into. It all starts right now, right here on Potaholics with Tech Talk. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> We're starting to notice the issues that are going on with a lot of our delivery companies and that. And I, I mean, shop and ship, I've, I've, you know, it, it works really well. The Aramex guys, their shop and ship yeah. works really well, unless it doesn't work really well. And when it doesn't work really well, you know, I've, I've had uh, incidents where my stuff has got lost or whatever, yeah. or, or, you know, it slowed down at one of their transaction points. And whenever that happens, yeah. it's just it's frustrating. Yeah, my my five six dragged. They um they basically had the wrong delivery address, an old address, and an address that actually I don't even know how they got that address because we weren't with Shop and Ship when we were there, which is pretty special. And after after nearly three weeks of yeah. it being in country and keep going to the same address, we managed to get through to someone to put it to one of the boxes, yeah. you know, one of the external drop box, and and it literally happened within a day. So I think um yeah some of these. I guess I guess when you're using some of these services, like they're they're a workaround basically, right? I mean, it right. allows you and I to ship things from the US and Europe, um, and they're fantastic. I've been using them for years, but they're still, I guess, a workaround. And and perhaps in a workaround world, when when the whole system logistically is flooded, because uh, there must be a lot more people using Shop and Ship, right? Yeah, Just like there's a lot more people using online ordering, right? There must yeah. be. Well, and the, the, the other thing with shop and ship in country that makes it work really well is just what you said. As soon as you can go to the drop boxes, it's fantastic. If they have to now start delivering to your house again yeah. or your yeah. office or whatever, then you're done for. So it's, yeah. uh, I'm, and they finally reopen those. So this is, this is a good thing. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is that the big problem with e-commerce is always that last mile or that last kilometer. Yeah. Everything's pretty easy up to that point. It really is. Exactly. It's kind of, uh, it's the technology is relatively straightforward. There's, you know, there's a lot of automation involved, but, but logistics, I mean, that's why there's been books written on how Amazon, you know, handle the logistics, even their warehousing. I don't know if you, we've spoken about this before, but their warehousing is they group items together what people buy. It's mm. not by, you know, I didn't brand know that. or location. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, they don't. It's, it's, you look at their, it's, there's a whole book that's been written on the system of um, storage in Amazon warehousing. So wow. you get kind of items that are bought together and then you get, you know, stacked items and books and then next to a book, you'll get a, you know, a Rubik's cube and it's bizarre, but it's all designed to enable the pa the pickers to do their job super fast. But I mean, obviously it's mo moving to automation now, but yeah. you know, when there's, when there's still people on the warehouse floor, I mean, that's what's happening. People are going and collecting things. So instead of going, ah, Linksys, right, Linksys is over there. I'll go there, and then this is there. They kind of pull it all together, which is, I'll, I'll try and find the name of that book. But, yeah, super, super interesting. i got to look at that because, I, you know, I, I did. Have you ever done that job as a picker? That's that's the craziest job going around. No, and no, I haven't and... actually. No, it's, uh, it, yeah, I, I, I've done some interesting things, but mine were usually food-based when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> quick service and uh, restaurants and bowling alleys and things like that <laughs> oh man uh, it, it, one of the ones that I'm following right now is this uh, SpaceX launch with the, the Dragon capsule I don't know if, you, if you're paying attention to that one and yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is this has just caught my attention in you know I, I, I just hadn't been thinking that they were they were ready to actually send a couple astronauts up in this capsule and give it a try it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty, you know, exciting and scary at the same time. But what caught my eye is when I started, you know, I, I've been looking at some of the, the footage of the, the two astronauts who are going to go up and they're showing the yeah. spacecraft and the guys were walking across the, the gantry in, you know, a mo you know, getting ready, doing a, a trial run in their spacesuits. And yeah. the first thing I noticed is I'm looking at it and I had to take a double take because I thought this was 2001 Space Odyssey. Like the it, <laughs> yeah. it, nothing at all looks like the way I think of astronauts because and I and I kept looking at it going why does the, why do these guys not look like they're ready to go to space what's what's yeah. off about it 
And then I, you know, as I'm reading through some of the literature and specifically this, this article that I was looking at, they were saying, well, there, there hasn't been any real development in spacesuits for this kind of, of travel in 40 years. I mean, yeah, you know, right. you're using Soviet stuff. Before that, they were using the American stuff. Okay, we yeah. had the space shuttle where they had slightly different costumes or, you know, costumes. Yeah. That's <laughs> making us think, oh, they never went up there. Didn't let you go to, didn't let you go to, to space there, James. You, are you a flat earther? <laughs> <laughs> but they, you know, slightly different suits. But these guys, it looked to me like 2001 Space Odyssey. I, I was yeah. just going, wow, like this is, this is pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, they, um, I, it's interesting, isn't it? When private enterprise kind of enters, you know, you've got obviously the, the SpaceX and Blue Origin and, and yeah. you know, some of the, with Jeff Bezos. So they've, they've obviously been inspired by the look of it, of all this, uh, sci-fi that they've watched growing up as a kid and clearly you know tried to try to implement that as well i mean they um he was on i don't know if you listened to uh joe rogan but he was on the joe rogan podcast again um and previous to that there was the head of um his engineering that was saying that this i mean it would have happened sooner but if it wasn't obviously for covid uh they would have been up there already and and done this they, they've done all the tests they've kind of mm. passed all of the all of the the boxes but it's exciting to um, I think it's exciting to to have. I mean, a, effectively, private company, yes, in partnership with NASA, um, yeah. but getting people, but getting people up in up there again, you know. A three point one billion dollar effort is what's gone into launching these folks off of American soil, and I think there's a lot of patriotism on the American front there. You yeah, know, yeah. Given that the only way to get up to the space station right now is using a Soviet air, you know, Soviet spacecraft. Tried and true, mind you. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to be said for this. But what I'm really interested in, and, and this is something that, the, you know, there's going to be a lot more coming out about the, this, but this spacecraft lands on Earth. This thing comes back down, fires its retros, yeah, so and lands on a launch boy, pad. Can you imagine? Like, that? <laughs> that's pretty incredible. Yeah, and then kind of more, more traditional how, you know, you would have saw Thunderbirds and everything, right, yeah. where it literally takes off vertically, lands vertically. As yeah. opposed to, I mean, you know, it, it's fascinating, really. But obviously, with space shuttle discovery and all these, they used to just glide in. I mean, yeah. they had nothing. They were yeah. they were flying a, a paper airplane at that point when they were coming yeah. back in, which is incredibly brave and, and a feat of engineering at the same time, right? Um, <laughs> just uh, you know, scary stuff where they've literally got nothing. They're just kind of gliding back in, and, and yeah, it was just old tech, like you said. I mean. It, old tech kind of gets replaced and and you know in this case obviously it costs quite a bit of money to replace the old tech doesn't it yeah and and just get but the yeah, mind still using i mean you imagine you we, we're sitting here on you know perhaps macbooks that are two years old and there's some things that are lagging imagine using some technology that's 40 years old <laughs> <laughs> well that's it you know i'm thinking yeah. some of these these spacesuits that they're wearing and what's going on in and at the cosmodrome there in in yeah. russia i mean that's old tech that it's oh, using yeah. old, it's using old tech in the capsules great they're reusable and, and it works yeah. hey there's something to be said for it yeah but that's old tech <laughs> it's yeah, like old. exactly yeah super old so yeah i mean the frustration of running old old laptops and old phones imagine being you know out of your own atmosphere <laughs> relying on something that's 40 years old i mean we we I'd struggle to go to the shop with an old phone. I I think I remember you. you remember I went through a retro phase when I found one of my old Nokia's, and I think I yeah. lasted about a week. And I was like, yeah. no, I can't deal with this. It's too slow. <laughs> <laughs> what's Thanks, going on? I wasn't in, orbiting it. What's uh What's going on in your world? What else? What do you got going on? And so I I what I pulled up actually, which um which I, I wanted to talk briefly about was something that I can't believe people are still doing it. And that's jailbreaking phones. Yeah. So the new iOS jailbreak tool can still unlock the latest iPhones. And and I just I, I, I find it amazing. I find it amazing that people I mean, I I'll be honest, the very first iPhone I had, um, we didn't have an app store here. We couldn't get an app store. It was very, you know, so I jailbroke to my first phone, went down to one of the buyers down the lane center and yeah. got it jailbroked. Um you know, and then and then we're able to download certain apps and and have it on there. But I don't, I don't know why you are 
continuing to jailbreak phones. I mean, obviously there's people, the article that I pulled up here is, is talking about the fact that they've just, you know, want to make sure that from a hacker's perspective, you can't exploit it. But I guess, I mean, there's still possibly now, I mean, it's, it's that criminality act where people don't mm. want to pay for apps or, or, I mean, some people say they do it because they want to personalize the experience. So, you know, things like when you flow it up, you get all the little funny wheels, but I'd, I'd, I'd almost think this is more of a play that, well, actually I want that $8 app, but I don't want to pay for it. What do you reckon? I, you know, probably, I mean, I can't think, think of any reason why you would want to be jailbreaking these yeah. days when it's, it's so easy to get access to pretty much everything. Yeah, maybe. Maybe folks yeah, want to yeah. download a bunch of apps. Maybe they want to, although in, in so many of the apps that I've been using these days, you get a free trial with them. You get a few days to sort of yeah, see yeah. if you like it. And if you like it, why wouldn't you pay the eight, 10, you know, the, the most expensive app I've seen recently is something I was looking at. It was $30 Canadian. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, you know, it's like, man, you know what? After using it for seven days, I said, it's worth $30. It's absolutely yeah, worth yeah. it. And I, I, I think increasingly I look at it and I think someone had to take the time to write it. Someone's taken the time to look yeah. at the user experience. They put it together. Why do I want to steal this? Yeah. Like, what's what's yeah, in it for me? Seems, so, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. I just, I, I just found it interesting that people were, I mean, I suppose the thing is, is that this kind of brings me on to the other one that I put up there, which was, you know, people try to attain or aspire certain things and sometimes they will break the law to do it and other times they'll just use massive inspiration. I mean, I put up this, um, this real, real me Apple watch lookalike. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that, but it's, this is astonishing. It's $53. (laughs) So it's a company out of China, funnily enough, they've been going for two years and they've just really got off to the Indian market that are selling. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to, to say that that's not an Apple Watch, right? I mean, you saw the images. I mean, that is pretty much Apple Watch, isn't it? Yeah. $53. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be it's, tempted to buy that, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, why? I mean, I get why. You want to have it yeah. on your wrist. Even if you're not using it, it's that, oh, I've got, I've got my Apple Watch. Look, he's wearing an Apple yeah. Watch. And, yeah. and I get that side because the more that I'm doing these kind of video conference things or you see someone, you, you're, you're, you're sizing up the entire package, right? And you're looking at what yeah. kind of glasses they got, what kind of watch they got, what kind of phone they got. Yeah. And I know yeah. we say we don't do it, but everyone does it. And you notice yeah. it's just that subtle thing, oh, they're wearing an Apple Watch. So I get, I get why people would want to do it, but if, if it, is it going to work like you want it yeah. to work? Yeah. And if it is, interesting that they're coming off the production line somewhere and, and someone's making yeah, that yeah. work. But you know, it's there to me that, that just, oh, there's that, it's, it's that gray line of if I'm willing to rip that stuff off, where am I going to draw the yeah, line yeah. on other things? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for that kind of cost quality has to, has to kind of be misplaced, right? It, it must be. I mean, I, 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 um, this last week I looked to buy just a kind of simple eight inch tablet. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was, I was astonished the amount of tablets out there <laughs> it's, and, it's and incredible. from companies. Yeah. From companies I'd never heard of as well. Yeah. Um, and, and also I think what's interesting is it must be a consumer rights thing that I was shopping around on noon on Amazon and had a look on Sharaf and a few of the other places. And, um, you, some of them came popped up really, really kind of, well, that's, that's an in like, you know, cheap almost price. So the range of looking at was kind of like the, the 8 inch. So you, you, I, I'll tell you the reason I was looking locally is because basically there's a new fire tablet out. So nice. in the States at the moment, I couldn't get the 8, the old one with the, you know, everyone wants to push the new 10 and it's not out mm-hmm. until I think 6th of June or something. So ordinarily I would have just gone for a fire, uh, yeah. fire tablet, but, but it gave, it forced me to look locally. And what was interesting was the amount of, you know, different, uh, different, I, like I had wannabes out there, I guess. But what, what I found myself doing was I found myself being more drawn to like a Samsung. I ended up buying a Samsung 8, oh. 8 or whatever. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you how it, how it looks and stuff. But um, it, once we tested it, but, but there was, there was the Huawei's, the, the um, uh, Xiom, XIMO, OneTouch, yeah. TouchMate, Merlin. I mean, there was, there was that space is so busy 
and there mm. was anywhere from I'd say probably four fifty up to about top end nine fifty. Okay, nine fifty was kind of the Lenovo, right? They do what, a what Lenovo. Kind of, what kind of spec were you looking at? What kind of spec did you have? It was, on um, it was you, kind of like the thirty two gig um, with expandable SD. You mm. know that 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 kind of range. Um, but but it, I, was, I was interested to see how much bang you got for your buck at that price point. Yeah. But for me, it was I, I actually leaned again back to Samsung because the combination of year, so it's like 2019 plus expandable memory plus in the back of my head, I'm like, it's a Samsung. You know, yeah. you, you you've got the, the badge is, you've is got a tough the, one, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's 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 difficult to to move away from that uh, mm. because because you know there was there was other other products brands i never heard of that were more expensive and i'm like how i mean okay yeah, the spec is a bit better um but but you know it it, it was kind of samsung one out basically um you know because, and, and i'm trying to try and it was cheaper than some of the others um but it's i think there's there's so many of these kind of chinese copycats out there um that that you know they they kind of tend to go after the lower end market and try to, you know, gain some some foothold or dominance in that space, and then basically I think almost get the get the buy in and then start to gradually increase their phone specs. I mean, I think Huawei did the same, where mm. you would never be spending any more than two thousand dirhams on a Huawei, but the latest ones like three and a half, isn't it, or four thousand? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, more, they're, they're right up there with Apple. Yeah, which is which is very interesting. Uh, you know, the, you know, this the, the big challenge I always face with when we start talking about this crowded space. And as you said, yeah. all of these products tend to come out of China anyway. And so, for me, the big, yeah, the big question is always: Are the are the technology companies who are building these things in China? Are they doing some of the research in China? Is this just an a, a, an authentic space that we're only seeing a little bit more of. Whereas if we were in the Chinese market, we would, we would be overrun with, yeah. with possibility. And I'll, I often wonder about that. Yeah, it's true actually. Yeah. We, we kind of, we see, we see a glimpse, don't we? Yeah. We see a kind of glimmer. I mean, I, I know when we first started talking about Axiom or whatever, Axiom or whatever, the XIO, MIOI, yeah. um, I was astonished to find that they've got five stores here. Yeah. You know, they've got like <laughs> Apple stores. I just, I just worry about, I worry about a company that, you know, makes trainers and then also makes smartphones. I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think, I think what's interesting is, so we don't see that side of Samsung, right? But Samsung yeah. does the same thing. Samsung in Korea dominates and makes everything, you know, yeah. it, 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 like it, it's high end tech. So railway, you know, monorails all the way down to, uh, all the way down to your phone in your hand. So I, I guess that that kind of works. But we, we kind of think about technology partners focusing on one area and taking a focus and concentrating their efforts, you know. But I don't yeah. know. It's it, it, it's it, it's odd, isn't it? You know. <laughs> when do you take When do you take delivery of this tablet? Uh, it'll be, be coming in the next couple of days, so we can do a bit of a review. Yeah. Um, first time I've I've kind of had a an Android device for a while. So I think it would be good to, good to see and, and kind of road test it a bit. Um, what, and, you know, what made you decide to go Android as opposed to heading down to the old, uh, getting online to Apple and, and getting one of the, the tablets that they're offering? Cause they got a great range as well. Yeah, it's just, it is price point. Mm. I just, you know, this, this, the kind of price point on, on an iPad mini, I think is any probably three, four times the price. Um, just can justify it. Just you know, that, 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 for for what I need it for, um, you know, it was it was I, like I said, my first point was Fire Tablet. You know, yeah. that was that was the range I was thinking, and then looking at the specs associated to that. So I honestly would have bought the the Fire Tablet if if it was available. I mean, that that's I can't fault those. The ones that I got previously, the kids Fire Tablets, fifty bucks. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, even even if they stop working after a year. I mean, it's, 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 you know, less than $5 a month. That's, yeah. uh, that's cost. So it's, um, yeah. And, and now the new fire tablets, I think I probably will buy one anyway, but the new fire tablets now have a USB C connector. Um, yeah. so they're improving that. That was a connection issue. Definitely on the, on some of the old tablets. It's just a bit fiddly. 
um, that that connector. So I think uh, with that with that improvement, um, you know, you're you're going to see a lot of people. And you can you can uh, interestingly enough, there's um, uh, there's a couple of there's something an app you can buy called Downloader that allows you to download uh, Android apps on the device as well. So, really? you know, yeah. So most of the, they have their own app store. Amazon have their own app store and they do have most things. So they do have, you know, like your Netflix of the world and, and, and your browsers. But a lot of the things that we kind of use a lot, like um, it's a YouTube, it doesn't have a native YouTube app. So okay. there's, there's, there's um, something called downloader that you can download. Um, <laughs> we were talking about jailbreaking, but, this isn't uh it's not it's not, yeah it sounded like you're jailbreaking yeah, exactly. this it's not it's not jailbreaking it's actually uh an emulator okay so it emulates it so you can kind of run the apps you still pay for them it's on the play store and everything if you want to download it but it's an emulator because interestingly enough i was looking at um this got this i went down a rabbit hole on on as far as emulators and i found uh i found an emulator for the macbook Okay. So there's there's a huge company um, called Blue Shields that actually yep. you can download for free an emulator on on your Mac and and it allows you to play. I mean it's it's mainly directed at games companies, but it allows you or gamers. It allows you to play Android uh, apps and a lot of games of straight from your Mac in an emulator, which wow. I thought was uh, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know how many times you've fallen down that rabbit hole. Um, you know, you kind of look for something and you take come up for air and it's, it's three hours of gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, what, what happened there? It, it happens a lot on YouTube, I think, as well. But uh, they rely on the fact, you know, that you link, you link, you link, you link, you link. And then, yeah. you know, you find yourself in deepest, darkest emulator territory. Um, yeah. But... Uh, the, the time and effort that people put into that people put into some of these things is phenomenal. I mean, there was a whole uh, th there was a whole kind of community on YouTube dedicated to emulating Android on Mac, and I'm like, really? And this just kind <laughs> of you know, it's, it's it's amazing, isn't it? That that people just spend the time and effort to to build out this content. But I suppose the thing is, people might be asking the same thing. Well, what are you crazy guys doing? You know, doing your, doing your podcast thing. <laughs> Although, I mean, we should probably, we should probably talk about this. Um, the fact that Joe Rogan, because obviously he is famously a podcaster. Did you so see that? He's now, he's now jumped over to uh, Spotify for 150 million. Hey, that's where we broadcast out of, you know, we're in that's good it. company. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> Give me one second here because yeah, yeah, this yeah, is no. the fun of working. For so it's, it's always interesting as we're doing podcasts because Andrew's coming to us, as you can see from his home, and he's got his family. And uh, fortunately, my family has, my kids aren't here. So That's it. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah, Joe I, Rogan I goes over to Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it was interesting though. I wondered... Um, so we, when you hear Joe Rogan, he talks about the fact a lot of the time that he's reliant on these other platforms, right? Yeah. So he has Jamie there who checks religiously what can go up on YouTube. And then he was basically, he delayed putting up on YouTube because people were taking clips and then putting it up on YouTube and monetizing his own content away right. from him. So he then stopped putting the whole show up. He then, so I'm wondering if, you know, now there is, he's gone to Spotify to basically control his environment and also potentially the video option, which again mm. made me think, well, Spotify is not a place that you traditionally go to look at video, although there are video on there. It's not, so I'm wondering if they're going to break out this whole podcast area with video um, because, Maybe. you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of people watch podcasts. There yeah. are some podcasts that I enjoy watching. I watch, um, like a lot of the comedian based ones, I like watching them, right? Because you see the quirkiness, you see the interaction, especially if there's two or more people. I, yeah. I find it easier to watch a podcast. So there's the guys that do usually like four of them. Listening mm -hmm. to that is a bit frantic, right? Sometimes. Um, but, but here, um, watching it's good. So, I mean, what do you think about it? What do you, what do you, 
you know, we're only speculating here, but what do you think he, he kind of made that move? Aside from obviously someone gifting him $150 million. <laughs> hey, look, I think, I think first and foremost, I think there's a money issue there. And he's, you know, Joe Rogan, yeah. this, is, this is a business for him. So 150 mil, yeah. you know, hey, that's, that's, that's a nice way to do this. And that, that suddenly takes a whole edge off what he's doing. And I think yeah. on, one, on one hand, you know, you could look at this and you can say, hey, I've, I've made the money. I'm, I'm good. And now I'm just going to keep doing yeah. great content because I've, I've got a great fan base. I've got a great following base. I got a great system yeah. in place to put this together. And now I've got a guaranteed platform that I know is, yeah. is working and is continuing to expand. And I think yeah. up to about now, and I would say up to about the last six months, look, Spotify has been working tirelessly to expand its base. It's been mm. working tirelessly yeah. to yeah. build. I, I think with COVID, it is reached a, it has absolutely reached a critical mass. And I think yeah. people who were following or people who were on the edge have bought into it. And as soon as, you know, as soon as you go from the, go into one of those trials, whether it's a one month or a three month, you're not going back. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, the quality is a little yeah. bit better. The yeah. programming's yeah. better. They put you into a different tier. So they start yeah. sending you more stuff to look at that you weren't getting. You're not, you're going to, you're going to spend yeah. your, whatever it is a month for, for that, that service. And so yeah. I think in the case of Joe Rogan, look, now he's got, he knows on the, on his Spotify network, he's got a guaranteed listener base. He knows that they work tirelessly to yeah. promote their content and he's, his top content is going to be on the top of the heap as when you go to the podcast, yeah. this is going to be up there. Uh, I think for him, it, it makes a lot of sense. Will he still be able to put it up on on other places? I think that opens up a really good question, and I I can't yeah. see why Spotify wouldn't be thinking about some kind of video option. But they're very careful, these guys, and they're very careful because they know yeah. YouTube has got has got an angle on this. Challenge with YouTube is the cura mm -hmm. the curating part part of it, and how they do that and how they put it together. Yeah. So. You know, if if Spotify is looking to jump into that realm, a lot like Apple has done and others, maybe this is a nice little trial balloon. Hey, we've got someone and we've got a small group of, of folks who are creating video content. It's good. We know it yeah, works. Yeah. It's been tried and tested through other other platforms. Maybe that's yeah. okay. I, I think it'll be interesting to see if he can still put up his stuff on YouTube delayed, but still put it up on YouTube with the video because Spotify is yeah. not offering the video. So that will be very interesting to see how that that's worked. Yeah. Out. I, I, but I think, I think they're going to use this. I, I think they're going to use this to try and look at some other options because I think the, I, I think so they're talking about gating the content anyway. So yeah. certain content will be gated or delayed release or, or anything. I mean, I think, but I think they're looking at this potentially as rolling out some new, new uh, options for people to watch some podcasts. Because I think the, um, you know, I mean, like you said, <clears throat> I think obviously the money is there. It almost, it's odd really. I mean, there's still people that don't really believe, you know, that podcasts uh, are anything. Um, and yeah. this almost legitimizes it. I mean, this is the first big, I think everyone knew when, I think when the numbers came out that Joe Rogan generated, I think 25 million last year or something. Yeah, you know, and people kind of went, oh, "Hold on a minute, you can make money off podcasts," um, <laughs> probably including ourselves. Um, but the 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 um, you know, you, you kind of you kind of look at that, and then now you look at obviously there's a solid investment from a large organisation um, to 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 legitimise it almost. You know, it it kind of feels. I mean, this isn't and it isn't something he's done overnight. This is no. something he's been working on. You know, for ten plus years. You know, yeah. religiously. You know, getting and and obviously it's, it's dramatically increased the quality of uh, interviewees that he's had uh, over the years, and he's really found his his place. Um, but I know that you, you know he his whole thing was that he wouldn't change for anybody. He wouldn't um, not do something. He wouldn't not interview someone. It was all very personal based. So it's interesting that you know he he said that he still has full creative control. Uh, full content control and everything. It's just he's been given a new home, um, yeah. you know, and, and interesting. I mean, I think that potentially when you, if you look at most of these platforms, these platforms basically become interesting for people as soon as you can monetize themselves, right? 
So if yeah. you look at, for example, the YouTubes of the world, people go on YouTube as content creators because they can monetize themselves. IGTV mm-hmm. is now um, creating that space that, that is monetizing themselves, right? Um, and, and also, if you look at Spotify, and I, I found, for example, in Apex, Apex, which is the guys, the Apex gaming that does Fortnite, there's actually a content creator um section in there that you can create your own content you can monetize it so again it's you know these communities a lot of these communities now seem to be driven through monetization um so so i think any kind of platform or community that starts to grow and starts to build more people jump on it because because basically you know you're making money from it. yeah well and i think it's important to note look we we publish through anchor Anchor is owned by Spotify. Spotify bought Anchor. Yes. And, yes. Yeah, and so, yeah. I forgot about that. So there's a, there's, you know, there's a clear push by Spotify to build its podcasting network. And, and you know, it, yeah. and, 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 and I got to say, when I, when I look at Anchor and I look at how we put our stuff up, a huge amount of the data comes out of Spotify at this point. And I've, I've compared... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's interesting when you compare the data across the different platforms. And this is a, this is actually a huge issue with with podcasting when people say, "Well, what's your data?" The the big issue becomes, "Well, where are you putting it up?" And I think for Joe Rogan, this became a really a really good feature in that a lot of his stuff was going up on YouTube because he was getting then one very clear picture on his his audience. If you're publishing on Apple, if you're publishing on Google, if you're publishing on Spotify, all of them give you different data because they're, you're getting data from each of those different streams. And the data is not the yeah. same. And it, so it becomes a really big uh, cornucopia of, of information that you've got to try and process. So for, for Joe Rogan, it makes a lot of sense. You just go one place and, and obviously yeah. you'll get a sense of where things are going. Totally. And I, I, think, I think for us, having someone like Joe Rogan doing podcasting that just draws more eyes to that podcasting network off of Spotify, yeah, which means yeah. they might, they might hit us yeah, as a rando, yeah. you know, and, and I, I'm happy to be in the shadow of Joe Rogan any day. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. For Alex over there. You, you mentioned here, you touched upon it about the fact that they must've been looking at data during COVID. Um, yeah. I think this is, this has accelerated a lot of people's plans. And I thought this about, we haven't put it in the notes, sorry, but you must have read about it with um, Facebook launching their shop yes. functionality. Um, and, and I wonder, I wonder, mm. that was obviously, it's not something you build overnight, right? Something like this, I mean, it's massive. Um, but, but I think that something like this, these plans must have been pulled forward. I mean, that, yeah. that talk about disruption as well. I mean, that's going to completely disrupt the e-commerce market because now you're going to have the ability with a Facebook you know, page and, and with an Instagram page to effectively you know, monetize your own business. Now, there, there have been options available to you, which is um, the Shoppable. Mm. So you can kind of click on there in a mini and it takes you to the website. But they're talking about you know, native, uh, native buying on the platform. I mean, I, I hope it comes to this part of the world as well. But, you know, did you see this? Did you, did you get a chance to have a look at this as well? I, you know what, I've, I've been looking at that and I've also been, I saw, I, I did see that and I thought that was really cool. And I then, there was also a piece out by McKinsey talking about business function and again, talking about the online environments. And it, it's sort of echoing what you're saying on a, on a larger scale, just talking about the, some of the different cycles yeah, that are coming yeah. about and, and the fact that so much has just been advanced so quickly as people have, have had some ideas, they're simmering and there's, they've been on a slow burn and suddenly they realized, forget the slow burn, let's, let's just dive into this right away. And, and they're making a go of it. And, you know, yeah, the reality yeah. is, as, you know, as, as, as we start coming out of the COVID bubble, in one sense, yes, we're coming yeah, out. Yes, yeah. we can go back to stores. Yes, we can start doing these things. I think uh, there, there have, and I've, I'm one of those people, there have been a lot of people on the fence with online shopping. And yes, we still want to go to the stores. I want to go to American Eagle and try on a pair of shorts. Yeah. But I have no yeah. issues yeah. buying stuff online now. And, and yeah. it, it works. It, it, especially if I know exactly what yeah. I want. Yeah. You, know, you know that you want to get that Samsung tablet. Why would you go to a Samsung yeah. shop when yeah. you can buy it online, 
probably cheaper. Yeah, They're going to yeah. bundle it with some stuff. You get the same warranty. So I, I think I thought the Facebook yeah. thing was, was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I, I think there's definitely going to be, you know, people there's been a massive increase in usage across these platforms. There's obviously more people buying things. And like you said, exploring certain areas that, that frankly they just didn't have before. I mean, I think the, the big, one of the biggest, um, let's say, uh, I'd, I'd say the big, well, the industry that's been hit the most from an e-commerce perspective has been the fashion side of things. I mean, oh, I think man. obviously fashion retailers, you know, work on seasons still, um, yeah. you know, so now you've got a lot of retailers that have a lot of current season that people are just not buying. So I think you're going to kind of start to see that creep online and, and see some of this. I mean, the challenge, I guess, with, with online fashion has always been, um, you know, you want to, like, you know, you're a size, whatever, an American Eagle, but if yeah. there's a new brand that kind of pops up online, you're like, well, hold on, you know, am I, am I a 32? Am I a 34? Yeah. Is it a tight fit? Is it a smooth, you know, you, you kind of, you're going to, those are some of the considerations. Whereas you're not thinking about that when it comes to, um, you know, electronics, uh, you know, you, you just kind of think, oh yeah, okay, cool. Well, that's, that looks good. And I'm not worried about size or, or anything like that. It, it's, um, but I think obviously they, they've been hit the, hit the worst really with the closure of shops because people just haven't been able to buy as much fashion and, and people, people haven't been going out. No. I mean, you know, you, you kind you of, I, I, think, I think, I think people's wardrobe has probably changed. <laughs> you know, during this time i mean i'm i kind of throw on a shirt once a week now just to kind of feel a bit normal again whereas you know kind of sitting here in my shorts and board shorts and yeah. uh you know like <laughs> like most people now right i haven't reached in the closet and put on a pair of trousers like i said i'm wearing board shorts every day you know it's i haven't, I haven't been wearing yeah. wearing shoes and socks i've been wearing you know, barefoot or flip-flops every day and yeah, I'm kind of yeah, going, that's it. Yeah. Are, are we going back to the office? Because I kind of like just working <laughs> in board shorts. <laughs> yeah, but you don't, you don't want yeah, area. I, I, do. I mean, I think that was the, yeah, go on. One area that I, 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 I would love, I, I've never tried online is buying glasses. And I don't know if you, if you're aware of, know anything about the, the uh, eyeglass industry. There's a lot. Well, there's lots of folks selling them on online and there's lots of services. I've never tried any, but I, I keep thinking, yeah. you know, mm, I, I really should be because this is, well, that mean, is, if, 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 I mean, the, the, the Warby Parker thing is interesting, right? In the States. So basically what you do with those guys is you, you get three pairs or five pairs, they send them to you, you try them on, you, you play with them, you have them for a week and then you send the ones back you don't want. Yeah. Now that that to me works because yeah. I think that that is that's something again that's in your control. I mean, you wear a lot of glasses. You've got different glasses, yeah. um, and you want to see what they look like on your face. You want to see yeah. how they match your hair, or you know whatever. And and I think that's um, that's that's a business that hasn't again been it hasn't really taken off in this part of the world because it's too small at the moment. But in yeah. the States, I mean, now it's massive. They've launched a couple of, I'll tell you what has been launched here. There's been a few contact lens uh, people that have launched here, right? Um, because again, contact lenses, I wear contact lenses. You're not, you're not fussed about, you know, w what color they are or anything. It's just prescription. But um, have, you, have you seen Warby Parker or no? I have. I have seen them. And I, I really, I haven't, I mean, I've looked at it and I thought, oh, I should try that out. And I, I haven't gone for it. But I'm, you know what I'm really surprised about is I, I had the, uh, the repair guys come in a couple months ago and, and one of the Pakistani guys who was working with them, the, their foreman, great guy. And he was wearing a neat pair of glasses. And I said, oh, those are great glasses. And he says, oh, let me tell you the story. And I said, what? okay, I'm, I'm, the guys are working. We got time. And he says, well, I went to, to the yeah, store yeah, here yeah. in Dubai to buy them. 800 dirhams. He says, I then took my prescription, took a picture of the, of the frame, sent my prescription to my brother in Pakistan, 30 dirhams for the exact same glasses out of Pakistan. And I'm going, how does that work? And, and, I'm, and so all that got me thinking was, how come someone here doesn't have a mail order system going? Whereas, hey, you know what? I'll size you up. I'll do this. I'm going to send the order and we'll air max it from Pakistan or India back to the UAE yeah. and I'll get your glasses and I'll have them in a week. And yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it's not going to be. It's, it's 
probably just scale. I mean, I think, um, I mean, famously, you know, glasses are one of those, uh, that one of those products that there's massive markup on, right? Oh, After yeah. shave, perfume, glasses, sunglasses. I mean, you know, you, you said it yourself from 30 dirhams to 800. I think there's massive yeah. markup on, on some of these, uh, some of these glasses, uh, for sure. Yeah. They, um, they don't, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I think obviously you, you kind of, a lot of the time you're paying for the name, uh, when yeah. it comes to, to branded glasses, if you just want standard run of the mill glasses, there's no reason why it should cost you, frankly, any more than 50 dirham anyway. Right. I mean, yeah. how many, how many <laughs> pairs of glasses do you own? I, I have about five, but my prescription yeah. changed and I've got to change the lenses and, the, and you know, it's always a poker game when you, when you go yeah. to get new lenses, cause Oh, I've got this and I've got that. And I say, I just want the regulars please. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it, it, you know, as long as your prescription, my prescription stayed the same for so many years, it was excellent. As soon as it changed, it you're became, not, you're not considering getting the, um, the screen green screen ones now because I am now you're I'm spending thinking, a lot more time. I am now I'm thinking I need to get those. I, I need to get the blue screen ones. So, or at least get a, you know, get ones that have that coating on them, but there's a lot of variety yeah. in that. So, but that, no, that's something I've really been yeah. thinking about. It's, it's funny thinking about it. My, one of my latest, my latest things is I had a, I had someone get in touch with me yesterday and said, Oh, we, you know, can we do a, a zoom? And I said, and, and so basically like yourself, I've allotted so many hours in the week for zooming. And because I'm not doing, I mean, you know, I'm not doing business like yourself. I, I've come to the point where I've said, I, I've got a limited bandwidth in a day. I can't do more than that. And part, part of it was just because I strain. Part of it was because I just couldn't then process all the material in time to get to the next phase. Yeah, yeah. So I, I literally said to this, this guy, I said, look, I, I can't do it this week. I said, I've, I'm, the spots are filled up this week, but I can do it next week. I'm zoomed and, out. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and I said to him, I said, I've got, I've got limited Zoom space. And he says, I get that. This is I, I, and it's it's that fine balance that you've got, like yourself, where you're you know you're doing business calls, you're working on on cultivating the, the industry, and your your own business. And where do you draw that line? And because everyone wants everything now, right? And yeah. and hey, the iron's hot. I need to get in there. So it's yeah. it was an interesting one. But it, the the interest the, the, for me, the interesting side was that the person on the other line said, "Okay, no problem. Let's do it next week." And and they kind of went and said, "Yeah, I did. You know, yeah. so many yeah. calls this week. I've done so many sessions this week. I get it." And I thought, okay, works for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I think um, I, I, that that Zoom fatigue is very real. I think the, the the challenge is as well that you know the the amount of interesting uh, webinars that are out there now that, yeah. that I want to kind of be involved in and jump on. Um, I, 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 you know, that that's that for me is the challenge for that is timing because a lot of it is out of the US. <laughs> So yeah. it kicks off at 9 p.m. here. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, oh, conveniently 11 o'clock Pacific. And you're like, oh, hold on a minute. That's like, you know, 10 p.m. here. So yeah. that's, 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 that's a struggle at the moment. But I found that what I've done is a lot of the time I've signed up to it and they've obviously done a re-record and then sent the recording. Um, mm -hmm. And then I can watch it at my leisure. But I'm signing up for a lot of these webinars at the moment just to just to kind of, you know, expand the knowledge base because um, even like I was watching, obviously we the uh, we uh, we built our Podaholics on 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 Wix. With we, we, you know, yeah. we wanted to test the platform, and it's phenomenal. Um, and there was a Wix uh, Power Builder kind of uh, session that was this this week. You know, and and it, and, and I kind of you know, it was an hour and ten minutes. It's quite intense. Um, but again, you know, you got these dudes that. Uh, building these massive sites. I mean, as is a fairly straightforward kind of run in the mill, but uh, again, it was interesting to to watch some of these webinars. You know, it was. It's funny talking about Wix and talking about putting together websites and things we just forget about. And and you know, as someone who who's working in the realm like yourself, the little things. And it, and I got the and I I, remember I sent you a WhatsApp this week saying, Hey, dude, we got a we got we need to update our socials on our bios. Because I get a, an email, which, which I thought was excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was excellent because here we've got um, a, a director of an organization who's looking at our bios and is then yeah, sending yeah, a note yeah, to say, yeah. hey, dude, you, you, you know, I know your site's new, but you've got a, this, this button is, is reverting back quiet, to a, yeah. a, generic, a generic site. And I thought, this is fantastic yeah, yeah. that people are looking at it. And then it reminded me, it's, yeah, and I, I get yeah. this all the time with the little things that we're working on, 
that it's the it's these little tiny little things that yeah there's a drop down menu but yeah. you forget about them because we're so used to stuff being integrated yeah, 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 so yeah. differently but you know it's just yeah, it's, no, so, it's, it's it's um it, it, yeah it's 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 i mean i think the thing is some of the some of these platforms there's um there's a whole movement uh now in in that space you know from apps to web to everything that that's kind of no code or little code um yeah. you know and it, 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 it i mean honestly frankly speaking some of these platforms are just so intuitive you know hubspot have got a new platform that's phenomenal it's just it's so intuitive and and really kind of you know just just i mean it's so easy to use and and yeah. you, you kind of if you if you almost release yourself and say well actually i'm going to build in this platform i'm going to build in this environment it, it really yeah. goes you know yeah no for sure oh makes it excellent do you have another meeting to run off to andrew Oh no, I've, lo I've lost. Then. Yes, I do. I do. Yes, I do. Awesome. It's uh, I, as much as it's locally eat here. We, I think everyone's <laughs> still pretty much working. So yes. <laughs> well, it, then in that case, we'd better uh, we'd better wrap up yet another show of potaholics and this has been a lot of fun it's 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 been a little low-key I, I kind of feel in, in eid vacation mode because we are coming to you from dubai from the middle east yeah. and it's the eid holidays as we're recording this particular episode and i'm feeling i'm feeling really laid back <laughs> really yeah yeah that's yeah. Uh, that's good i i gotta be honest with you i i'm really kind of uh i haven't left my place so i just um it's been a it's been a regular regular jaunt as it were so uh yeah it's uh i think i think it was probably uh needed the uh, the break and i'm hoping everyone kind of gets back to normal uh tomorrow so yeah we'll, we'll wait and see <laughs> andrew as always it's been an awesome one and we'll catch up again really soon potaholics is what you're listening to tech talk with andrew thomas from digitalnexa.com We've talked about all sorts of great stuff and you can follow us on all of the socials, Potaholics with a K, www.potaholicswithak.com and of course, potaholicswithak at gmail.com if you want to get in touch with us. This is Tech Talk on Potaholics.